if I could come in on that, I, I agree with Jonathan, and um, um, I think that's right. It is rare. Much more common is the in-between silence um, for all those years that he knew and didn't speak. And he continued that afterwards. You know, he was opposed to the bombing in Kosovo, but he wouldn't, he said it in an interview to a Canadian journalist, but he had a great deal of difficulty saying to an American audience. Uh, in the one time I heard him, he said, well, I'm not in office. I don't have all the information the president does. I mean, just the sort of excuses that were made at the time. But, um, you know, in addition to what Jonathan, he asked for the, what's now called the Pentagon Papers. He asked Leslie Gelb to prepare a study of what Vietnam had been about. That was also, I think, a, a rather unusual move to make. A little late, maybe, but he did. And he, and he asked that uh, a full review of everything from the American involvement with the French on up to 1967. And as he started to read it, he is said to have said, you know, people could be prosecuted for what's in here. Precisely the same remark that LeMay had made to him about the firebombing. It's not that he was a man without a conscience, not at all. And he teared up always when he talked about Vietnam, and he was obsessed by Vietnam. But that's as far as I'm ready to go. Uh, uh, I recognize his conscience and his moral conscience and, and the pain that Vietnam caused him. On the other side is the pain he caused. Howard Zinn, would you like to weigh in here? Uh, yeah. You know, I was, I was listening to uh, Jonathan Schell and Marilyn Young and about um, McNamara's, uh, well, his anguish and his, all of that. And, and I understand what Jonathan is saying about the fact that you can't find anybody in, in the Vietnam War, or in other words, anybody at that level, you know, who is going to to do anything uh, in dissent and who's going to speak out. And so what does that tell us? I mean, it's true. It's absolutely true. But what does that tell us? I think it tells us that once you enter the, the machinery of government, uh, once you enter the, you know, the house of empire, uh, you are lost. Uh, you, you are going to be silenced. Uh, you may feel anguish, and, and you may be torn, and you may weep, and so on. But you are not going to speak out. And what what lesson I think that is for us? Well, for young people who who may be thinking, oh, as many young people do, you know, I think I'll enter the government, I'll get in there, and I'll make a difference. No, the people who made a difference are not the people inside the Pentagon. The people who made a difference were the people outside the Pentagon, the people who demonstrated against the Pentagon, the the people in the streets, the uh, uh, the movement, and if people are going to uh, devote their energy to making this a better world, they better not think of getting into that machine uh, that uh, destroyed people like uh, McNamara and that silenced them. Jonathan Show. You know, uh, I just want to mention one person who was inside. I, I agree with what uh, Howard Zinn has to say, and. Uh, uh, I, I think it's, it's broadly true, but lest we think that uh, all options are foreclosed once one enters into that killing machine, uh, there is one name that should be mentioned, and that's Daniel Ellsberg, uh, who went into yes. full opposition uh, at great risk to himself and persisted in, in a lifetime of indeed supporting the kind of public protests that, uh, that Howard Zinn is uh, rightly talking about as the real solution to problems like this. No, that, that's absolutely true. Yeah, that's I absolutely agree. true about Daniel Ellsberg, and uh, who released the Pentagon I, Papers that Marilyn Young was just describing. What's that? Yes, and he worked. He, he worked on them as well. He was part of the team that put them together in 1971. Howie, Howie. We have five seconds. Dan Ellsberg. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Ellsberg was part of that huge 1971 protest against the war. Just to bring together Jonathan and Howard's comments. Well, I want to thank you all for being with us. Uh, Jonathan Schell, Harold Willens Peace Fellow at the Nation Institute, uh, has written two books on Vietnam, Marilyn Young, professor of history at New York University, and Howard Zinn, historian, author of many books, well known for People's History of the United States Democracy, now produced by Sharif Dokadus, Aaron Mata, Angeli Comet, Steve Martinez. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.